Hello everybody, I'm glad to be with you at Bible study. Uh, hope for more, but I'll settle for what I got. Uh, a Bible study is something that's a little bit different than church services. A uh, Bible study is just what this says. It's the reading of God's Word. Now, it's different when you read God's Word and then go to a denominational church. There's a... How you doing, brother? Doing fine. Good. You ain't like we just, just now started. I ain't never been late in my life. But we wanted to show you what God's Word says. Not what men's words are. Not what religions teach. Not what denominations teach. Uh, in this book, it's proven that from Genesis to Revelation, what was said by the Lord was spoken to men, and to the men that it was spoken to, God instructed them to write it down and to keep it in a record in the form of a book. So now we have 39 books of Old Testament, and we got 27 books of New Testament. Well, in breaking this down, and you wouldn't think uh, in comparison to what God has said and done, like the last chapter of St. John's Gospel says that the things that Jesus did was written in the form of a book. The world couldn't contain it. It would be pushed out of orbit. Stacked one up on another all the way around the world uh, and stacked plumb beyond our imagination. If the things that Jesus did was written in book form, the world couldn't contain it. That's John's expression of, of the greatness and the magnitude of God. So what we want to do is try to find out what God is saying and not men. Uh, even though this was written by man, the Apostle Paul clarifies that all Scripture was given by the inspiration of God through the Holy Ghost. And it's profitable. This scripture is profitable for all man to correct us, to instruct us, and give us a what we would want as a walk with God that's perfect. That's what he said, to make us perfect. It corrects us, it instructs us, and it makes us have the right understanding of what it is about. And as I preached on the radio two weeks ago, uh, Jesus is not a Catholic. Jesus is not a Baptist. Jesus is not a Methodist. He's not Holiness or Pentecostal or Lutheran or Presbyterian. He's not even what the foreign countries think of him to be. Jesus is God. And God, through him, and that mystery, let me just briefly describe that mystery because people are mixed up. They think there's three gods and some of them think there's two gods and some of them think there, there's just one God. Well, the scripture sticks close to and never refers out of that there's only one God. And that's all the way through Jeremiah, all the way through Isaiah. Uh, matter of fact, let's just go to the book of Isaiah and read what uh, he says about let's go to Isaiah 43 book of Isaiah chapter 43 uh, then we'll find out what he says about and let's go down from 43 to about uh, verse 8 We'll start right there. Start Bible study right there. And remember, this book, I'm going to do some explaining to you. Everybody thinks this is a man-made book. Uh, this thing has nothing to do with men. God worked and used men to portray His thoughts, His wisdom, His ways. And what we want to do is break it down and show it where what God says 
is what men did. Paul said that all scripture was given by the inspiration of God through the Holy Ghost. That's what it says back in Timothy. So understanding that through the Spirit, God inspired men like Moses. There's no man. There's no man in his right mind or in a twisted mind could sit down and write the first five books of, the, of this book, book here of the Bible. There's nobody that could ever sit down and write Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy and put it in the order that it's put in. Why? Because it wasn't done by flesh. It wasn't done by natural, carnal, earthly men. It was done by a man that was chosen in a dispensation and put here at born in a perfect timing, born in the perfect setting of a generation uh, and in a dispensation. Dispensation to me is a thousand years. A generation is 40 years. 40 uh, year generations, it takes 25 of them to make a thousand years. And that's the way I see it because the Bible speaks about generations, generations, and generations. Then it talks about dispensations of time. And dispensation is what I feel like is a thousand year period, which Peter says in understanding uh, in that one day with God is a thousand years. And a thousand years is just like one day to him. So time is not of the essence to him. But as I begin to show you the Bible, we're, we're going to go back there and we're going to show what... Uh, I didn't close my book here. I was going to read uh, Isaiah to you. But what Peter is talking about in uh, what revelation that God gave him that he had uh, that a thousand years was one day and one day was a thousand years. <clears throat> God gave that to him for a purpose to comfort Peter uh, in his constant all his life waiting for the Lord to come back. God wanted Peter to understand. Uh, Peter, this is not about you and your time. This is about God and his time. And that's what, why he told him that. A thousand years with a man is just like a day with God. You know, so. Anyway, Isaiah. Let's go to 43 and start in at verse, uh, what did I say? Eight? Eight. All right. Isaiah is saying, bring forth the blind people that have eyes and death that they have ears and let all the nations be gathered together and let the people be assembled. Who among them can declare this? In other words, you bring all that blind people. He's not talking about blinded eyes. He's talking about blinded in the mind. And where he's talking about deaf, he's not talking about that they can't hear words and speech of, of sort. He's talking about that they can't hear God and that they can't see God and His ways. What he's saying here, who can declare... Uh, let's see, lost in place. Who among them can declare this and show us former things? That them, let them bring forth their witnesses that they may be justified and let them hear and say it is truth. If you can show me things that's come to pass before now, bring your witnesses and tell me and show me, Isaiah said. He said, you are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen that you may know and believe and understand, and listen to what he said, that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. Even I am the Lord, and besides me there is no Savior. I have declared it, in other words, he has proclaimed it, and have saved, and I have showed, 
when there was no strange God among you. All in Israel and what time that the prophets write, they're always constantly fighting against idols and graven images. That's their main message is that Israel is carried away into a delusional world, uh, to a make-believe world, and they make up gods. They carve gods out of stone and out of wood, and they would uh, take their hands and make these gods and make uh, sacrifices and kill animals unto them, and they would make a meat offering and drink offering to idol gods. The Lord here is saying, there is no Savior. Besides me, there is no God. He said, I have declared it, and I have saved, and I have showed, when there was no strange God among you. In other words, I have always been there. But you have strange gods before you, but they're not able to proclaim and do what I do. Uh... Therefore, you are my witnesses, saith the Lord, that I am God. Now, he's going to give some things here uh, in the references to even back to Israel uh, when they passed through the sea and things like this. Before the day was, I am he. Now, what's that tell you? That means before the day was ever created, before the sun ever shined on earth, and before the earth was ever made, he was. And there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work, and who shall let it? What is, what do we think the work of God would be? Putting in plumbing, digging ditches, uh, given wisdom and knowledge to make automobiles and rockets and all that. Do we think that's the work of God? <coughs> no. God never does no manual, hand-on work. What he works, he speaks. He said, let there be a sun, and immediately it appeared. He said, let there be an earth, and immediately it appeared. He said, let the stars be, and immediately they were. And you don't have to worry about them falling and hitting you. We don't have to worry about like a traffic jam and all of this uh, with the stars. They're not going to fall out of orbit. They're not going to be banging into one another, cr crashing and clanging. They're, the sun is not going to fall into the earth and uh, cause it to perish, burn it up. Only way these things could happen is that by the mouth of whom we now know was Jesus. Jesus didn't declare his name back here. But Jesus is the only begotten Son. Jehovah was the Son of God. I am, <coughs> where he says here, that meant that he was the Son of the living God. Any reference to, uh, out of this Old Testament, the Lord, Jehovah, Counselor, the Mighty God, all of those give reference to a God, but the name has still been hidden. And that name that would be revealed can't come until an appointed time. It, it was like this. Isaiah's preaching here, and it's uh, 760 years before Jesus. If you go back to David, David is preaching uh, and, and writing the book of Psalms and things that uh, is 1,000 years before Christ. And you go on back, uh, you have from, like as we know as Adam and Eve, well, we have them as the beginning. And we know for sure that Adam never got on the ark with Noah. He had to die before a one day, 1,000 year dispensation. And then, at the, when Noah builds the ark, just upon 
what God instructs him to do, uh, perform. Well, he saves the world through that ark and the souls that were inside of it. And then when it's over with and the flood receives, recedes and out comes uh, Noah and his family. And what happened in the replenishing of the earth, a man named Abraham is born. And Abraham is born at the 2,000 year mark. From Adam until uh, Noah is 1,000 years. And from Noah until Abraham is another 1,000 years. Two different dispensations. If you could go back to Revelation and start counting these things down, you would saw where John had a vision. The word revelation means revealing. Everybody thinks it holds all this mysterious stuff. And not no. Back here it was mysterious. Back here it was hidden. The Apostle Paul talks about the grace gospel, the work of the cross, and the things that Jesus done that were hid from the foundation of the world. But now, God wants you, us to walk in knowledge and wisdom in light. He don't want us walking in darkness and in the shadow of things that was to come for back here. He wants us to walk in the light. Jesus was the light of the world. He came to shine a light. It wasn't a sun. It was the truth. It was what he was going to shed in wisdom and knowledge upon mankind. So what happens, you see, back here, John has this uh, dream and this uh, mighty revelation under the anointing of the Spirit that so heavy upon him. And he saw in heaven, he saw an altar and he saw a, a book that was written and it had seven seals on that book. It's, it's like it's divided. It's got seven, seven dividers in here. Those seven dividers are in different books. One thousand years from Adam until Noah. Another one thousand from Noah until Abraham. And then another thousand from Abraham uh, up to David. And another thousand from David until Christ. So you have four seals, four thousand years. In these dispensations, God is going to bring forth men, holy men, prophets, men that He is going to allow to be born. He is behind the birth of every person on this earth. From the end, the last one that will be born, to the first one that was ever created. Don't never think that men and women have passed through in God's area of the earth and he didn't notice it or he didn't recognize them or he didn't have nothing to do with it. He has touched and been in the form of being able to be touched in the form of prayer in the form of seeking God and looking for God, the first thing you want to do is open this book where the Word is God. The Word was God. The Word is God. St. John's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 1 down about 13 and 14. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. When did that happen? The fourth day. The fourth seal came on. Jesus is born as a baby. And after he's born as a Christ child, he grows up. What he grows up under is right back here. He grows up under Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Jesus is a Hebrew. He's a Jew. And he is going to live his entire life every moment of it under the law. Jesus never lived, took a draw of breath that he was not under the law. Why? Why was this so essential? Why was it so important? Because when Adam fell, 
when Adam failed, God already had the remedy. Did you know that? God knew Adam was going to fall. He knew the power of Satan. And he knew Satan was casted here in a third of the host of the heavenly angels to earth. And the earth became the prison of Satan. And then God makes a man named Adam and creates him out of the dust of the earth. And then he puts him to sleep and takes out of Adam a wife. He pulls, some people said, a rib. I don't think he would pulled a rib out to injure or to hurt or nothing else Adam I think he just took it out of him to show in a later time a parable that when Christ was hanging on the cross and pierced in the side and out of him came forth the water that would be Christ's wife the church see all that are washed in the blood of Christ there's the church that Adam was the natural and what, when Adam went to sleep, and the word sleep means death, or when Jesus went to sleep on the cross, out of his side had come forth the blood. And that blood was the life-giving blood of our Savior, our Lord, and our Redeemer. But when Adam sinned, what he, he was brought into and in subjection to, uh, hold your page right there just a minute. Hold your page just a minute. I'll, let me mark mine so I'll have it. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 3. Where it all began. Genesis chapter 3. <coughs> I've done explained all of this where God made all of these things in six days and on the seventh day He rested and he spoke all the worlds and planets and moons. And there is nothing that's ever known to man or ever will be known to man that God didn't make. The Apostle Paul has these visions and revelations of who Jesus was. And Paul said that Jesus was before all things and that all things were made by him, through him, and for him. And without him, there was nothing that was made, Paul said. Read, we'll read this over in the book of Galatians and Colossians uh, and Ephesians. He, he talks about this in all three books. You see, the controversy back in this, those days was who God was too. It's in our world. The controversy, controversy. If all denominations were serving the same God, we would all be united instead of divided and separated. If we was all serving the same Lord Jesus Christ by what He wants, we would all be together, just like a body. You see, the church that believes this is together. We're one body. He's the head setting on us the body that's why paul that revelation is nowhere in this book except in paul's teaching he's the only one who speaks about the church and the body of christ uh, our world has been doctrinated it has been uh, exploited by satan satan is always challenging the creation every being that's ever been on this planet. Did you know Satan has challenged every person that's been on this planet? He has been here for every moment of it. He was here, Genesis chapter 3 verse 1. The serpent was more subtle, undermined, deceiving, than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. See, I told you. God made Satan. His name wasn't Satan there when he made him. He was Lucifer. And his nickname for what that stood for was beautiful. He was a beautiful angel of high power. Just one of three. 
Michael, Gabriel, and Lucifer. Those three who God trusted over all the angels of heaven throughout all of the galaxies. We don't know what kind of life, what things that went on out there that they were in rule and authority and dominion over. But what little bit that we do know about this is that the devil thought that he could take his third of the host of angels that he was in rule and dominion over and he would turn them against God, the Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus. And he would go against him and try to overpower him so that he could inherit all of the things that had been made in heaven and in earth. The devil here was more subtle than any beast of the field. The field is the earth. And he had said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said unto you, Not, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, hath God hath said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, neither lest you shall die. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. You see what his contradiction, how his rebuke of the woman, when he said, No, you won't die. What's he going to promise her? And he said, for God doth know in the day that you eat thereof, your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You see what this whole warfare is about? It's about knowing good and being able to recognize evil. That's our problem. The things that we don't recognize as evil are coming into the realm of our life in a form of tradition and things that we uh, just take for granted. Because generations past, generations past, it, they have all inherited tradition. But those traditions weren't the things that God intended and purpose. Okay. Now, right here, after Satan has beguiled Eve, Eve tempts uh, Adam, and Adam and her eat of this forbidden fruit in the midst of the garden. The woman saw the tree was good for food. It was pleasant to the eye and a tree to be desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also to her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened and they knew that they were naked. They were naked and we don't know how many hundreds or thousands of years that this situation were, was into place. We, we don't know. We don't know because really time is of no essence. We don't know how old Adam and Eve were when they disobeyed God's command. And we don't understand uh, time as, as like they did. We only understand what we read here as what had been said. And when the woman deceived Adam and they ate, well, that was what God had said, don't do. Of all of the things in the garden, they could walk out here and eat of that fruit. That fruit. They could eat of any fruit on any bush, on any tree. And what they were eating was nourishment. They didn't have to worry about sickness and disease and affliction. They didn't have to worry about insect bites because there weren't no torment in the Garden of Eden. There weren't no ticks. There weren't no chiggers. There weren't no bumblebees and wasps. There weren't anything that could torment Adam and Eve. It was perfect. 
They never got hot. They never got cold. Yet they were no cold. And then at that, they still never recognized or felt uh, known lust or covetousness or desires that men and women would have later on. Because Jesus changed it. He made the woman to crave the man and to desire the man. And he made the man and his desires to be to the woman. He made it, makes it right here. We might read it. Let's read on. And when they, verse 7, their eyes of the, both of them were open. They knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. They made them like a little covering of their naked body parts. They didn't know they was naked one day and the next day when they ate, their eyes were opened and they realized they were naked. And a shame come upon them. A guiltiness came upon them, see? All right. Here's what the Lord does. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam, his wife, and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto the Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked. When he was talking about hearing his voice, this was a, a figure of a man walking through the garden who was the voice of God. And they had communion. They had fellowship. Adam and Eve had fellowship with this Lord God. Right here. This would be the only begotten Son. Right here. Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, The woman that you gave me, gavest, thou gavest to me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me. Remember? Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, the Son of God, talking to the serpent, Satan, the fallen angel. See, he's done failed. He's done tried to draw the th whole, whole third of the host of the heavenly angel, angelic be beings, and they are all taken out of heaven and placed on earth and the earth be actually becomes their prison. They are confined here. They, they have no power to go off and roam uh, into the galaxies, out into hundreds of years of tra time travel as we know. They had no, the, these beings, angelic beings, had the authority to go anywhere in what God had made uh, at any time. But when he betrayed the Lord and tried to overthrow him, the Lord casted Satan and his angels on earth and they were stricken, they were stripped of their power and confined here. Now listen to what it says. And the Lord said unto the serpent, Because you have done this, thou art cursed above all the cattle, and every beast,